Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shar. In this video, we're going to react on a video that I was in because I was interviewed by a Chinese media called Woo! China Plus. So China Plus is a sister company of CTG. Mm -hmm. That is uh, China Television Global Network, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to put the correct title here or the correct meaning of the abbreviation CTGN. So yeah, that's it. Without further ado, let's go watch. And by the way, this is like my first time to really watch it. So a little background on this video. This is a video about how I met my Chinese boyfriends. Hi, my name is Charmaine. I'm from the Philippines. This is my Beijing boyfriend, Maibo Andy. This is my Beijing dog, Bailey. Yeah, hello, I'm Andy. And this was our lovely bulldog, Bailey. Actually, Bailey's not a bulldog. She is a French bulldog, not a bulldog. My boyfriend was wrong about it. I have been here in Beijing for four years now. And we have been dating for, it's gonna be five this February 16th. So exciting. <laughs> From my perspective, okay. Um, I just started my work uh, in 51 Talk. 51 Talk is an online teaching platform. So for the first day, um, I just finished my training and then he was my first student. Okay, so let me stop there. I'm gonna tell you how we met because I don't know they cut those part out. I decided to work in an online platform called 51 Talk. If you're not familiar with that, I did a video about that here. Why I left 51 Talk. It was an old video, so I'm not really proud of that vlog. Okay, so anyway, so it was my first day and he, my boyfriend now, was my first student. He had this material that they did not teach during our training, so I didn't know what to do. So I just bluntly told him that, hey, I don't know what to do. Um, maybe you could change to another teacher. But what? because the class already started, he couldn't just like change to another teacher. So he just told me like, we could just like, you know, talk freely and not discuss the class anymore. So. After that, what he did was um, book my class every day because I guess he find me cute and funny. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what how we met. We met online. He, I was his teacher back then. He was my student. Uh, what I did is to just uh, share everything that I have done. There's like uh, portfolios of my design and my trip, and then I even tried to play saxophone for her over internet. So technically, I think I make the first move because of that. First, uh -huh. Uh -huh. He definitely made the first move because he did a lot of um, things that were very extra. Um, I remember he would book four classes, that's two hours. He would book four slots for me in the afternoon so that I could rest up. Mind you, we were just like, we know each other during that time we just know each other for a couple of months we were just friends their relationship from from the beginning was just like hey this is my teacher he is my student there was no romance going on so it was just like strictly student and teacher but he did a lot of things that changed the relationship like like he said he played saxophone for me not only that he played guitar for me like you know serenading me um, for the class and uh, showed me a lot of his pictures so yeah, he definitely made the first move. <laughs> after that, after a few months of just you know having class online, there was a time that he went to Thailand and he invited me to go to Thailand. And naturally, I just said yes because I wanted to have a break as well because I have been really working hard in Five and Talk like nonstop from morning to night. So I felt like I needed to give myself a break. So yeah, I said yes. We we decided on the time. We decided on where to meet up and then we met up. The first time I saw him, I was running and then we crossed paths. I said, hi, bathroom. <laughs> and then I run towards the bathroom and then peed. After that, we just had lunch and then we checked in in our prospective hotel rooms. That's it. And then our um, love story began there because the next day was the Valentine's Day. It was very romantic. We didn't do anything because we were just like friends. That time we consider ourselves, I guess, friends. Um, so we just hang out a lot. And then okay, two days later, February 16, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And I said yes, but I have a condition. I told him that you need to go back to the Philippines and 
meet my mom so that you could be my official boyfriend, my <laughs> very legal boyfriend. <laughs> um, and he said yes immediately without skipping a beat. He said that he will go to the Philippines on March, a month later. And he did. <laughs> he came to the Philippines on March and had dinner with me and my family. And um, he met my mom. And then he played badminton with my brother. <laughs> That was about it, I guess. Yeah, so our love story began there. And then from there on, we, um, well, I flew back and forth from the Philippines and China because I wanted to travel to China a lot. And um, he was still studying back then, he was still in university. So my schedule was more flexible than his, so I just, you know, traveled more. While I was in the Philippines, we meet each other every three to six months. So we met around 2015. And then we started dating February 2016. And then I moved to China on August 2017. And that was at the same time that he was going to America for his master's. <laughs> so um, even though I already moved in China, we still continued this long distance relationship. And even though he went to America and I was in China, we still try to meet each other every three to six months, whether he's going back to China or I go to America. So I went to America once and then he went back a lot of times in China because I was already working here and it didn't give me a lot of like, you know, flexibility to move things around. Fast forward to two years, he came back to China and now we're living in the same city. <laughs> so it went very well. Long distance for three years. 2016, 2017, 2018. Yeah, three years. Oh, he went back around 2018, 19. So three years, three years long distance relationship, two years already here, like together. That's very cool, right? Okay, continuing on. I think my Beijing perspective is quite different from a foreign perspective because I'm dating him. Whenever I go through the WeChat groups and they recommend certain restaurants like um, the local, yeah, uh, which is like, you know, a foreigner friendly restaurant. I do not know these restaurants. <laughs> I do not know the restaurants that uh, they're talking about. I know a lot of the local restaurants that we went to because I'm dating him. Okay, um, I'm gonna cut again. So the question for this part was, does dating a local Beijinger affect my Beijing experience? And of course I said yes, because uh, like what I said in the video was that I got to know the local restaurants, the Chinese ones, the real authentic Chinese food because of them. I do not know a lot of the foreign restaurants here, but I do know a lot of like, or I have been to a lot of the local Chinese food here. So yeah, so I was just like feeling out of place, especially in WeChat groups because they know a lot of restaurants and I was just like, I'm sorry, I don't know, I'm, I'm a fake foreigner here in Beijing. <laughs> He introduced me Beijing Duck and he introduced me Bian Yi Fang. He taught me how to properly wrap the Be uh, Beijing Duck, which is the first you put the Bian and then meat and then the green onions and then the sauce. Uh, how but, to make it pretty look uh, has a shape, right? Yes. Okay. But I refuse to do this because I don't want to put the sauce in the Bian. I want it to dip. Because I like the sauce, it's sweet and sour and I like to get as much of the sauce that I can. Okay. <laughs> so this part, the question here is that what did my boyfriend introduce to me being uh, in Beijing? So he introduced to me actually a lot, like um, a lot of the architectural stuff here in Beijing. We've been to a lot of museums and also a lot of the Beijing food. Um, one of the Beijing food that I like the most is Peking duck or Be Beijing Kaoya. And if you know how to eat Beijing Kaoya, you actually put the sauce together with your fillings inside but i do not like to do that because like i said in the video i like the sauce i really love it i like to dip the whole thing in sauce and then eat it Two. one thing that i think we introduced her recently we taught her how to make dumplings and chinese hondun. the jiaozi the dumplings uh she she's super uh enthusiastic with it, mm. right? And she is very talented. That is one of the most tiny things that I could ever imagine to introduce to her. Okay, so um, yeah, his family taught me how to make uh, dumplings. It's actually 
I'm gonna put a video here. <laughs> they taught me how to properly wrap dumplings and make dumplings from scratch. Well, that was really awesome. I was really interested with that because, you know, I like to do things on my own rather to buy them, but not all the time. So yeah, so they taught me a lot. And the first time I met his parents, they were really, really welcoming. To my surprise, because I was really afraid that they were going to be against our relationship because I'm still a foreigner, I'm not Chinese, right? But they were really welcoming and they were really, um, they're really sweet. They treat me like their own dog. I really felt the love and this welcome to our family kind of feeling. It was really, really nice to meet them. I met them a couple of times actually. Been to their house a couple of times. Every big holiday, yeah, we we go back to Chindao and we meet each other again. So kind of, I feel like I'm part of the family. Even though I'm not really part of the family, I just feel like I'm part. I'm, I just feel that I'm already part of the family. Okay, continue. Yeah, so this question, um, this question is like, what do you do on the weekends or free? Time? Whenever we have free time, like on weekends, we like to go around like parks here in Beijing and eat a lot of food. Um, aside from that, we like to go to museums because of his profession. So he's an architecture. So we like to go to museums. We've been to tons of museums. We've been to National Museum, Beijing. Nature Museum, yeah. Da Xinzhu, and a lot of uh, fantastic building around San Tanzun and Wangjin area. But that was before, I guess. We, we were really, really um, trying to go around Beijing a lot to get to know the city a lot. We went to a lot of the museums, ate a lot of the restaurants in San Yitun, went to different cities to explore. But these days, because I'm working on the weekend, so we just stay at home and just order, you know, why my alama. But we still do like to go to parks. In fact, I also did a vlog about it. It was like the first time I went to the park with my dog. I'm gonna put it here. Um, it was, I at least love the park it, just because we have a dog. But if we don't have Binyang, I don't like the park. It's just grass. <laughs> I don't want to go to the park here. And it, I, I just, I don't enjoy parks. <laughs> Just because we have a dog. Continue. When dating a person outside from your culture, so you need to be open and uh, respect their culture as well. So that's actually what attracted me the most to him is that he introduced to me a lot of his culture and was very interested in knowing mine as well. That was the advice. <laughs> uh, this is like the advice part. Like um, the question was, what advice could you give to people who want to or who uh, are considering a intercultural relationship? And I just said, you know, that's what I said. Like, you know, you need to really be open to change and also accept their culture because you can't change who they are, and you especially can't change the culture. But you know, so accept and also voice out if things are uncomfortable for you but respect i guess that's the most important thing respect their culture um, so the next part talks about like our plans for the future or do you want to stay in beijing so, yeah we're just gonna work here or until you know i don't know because i'm a foreigner so if my company decides to not provide me the visa i don't know what to do <laughs> so that's it <laughs> yeah okay so yeah so i'm we're just planning to stay here in Beijing and honestly that's it that's the whole video <laughs> this interview was actually a very special um, memory because it was my first time to be interviewed that um, professional <laughs> Rachel Weiss I hope I'm pronouncing her name right Rachel Weiss was our interviewer she works um, in China plus so she she was very professional. We did a lot of takes with her and she was very patient. So I guess, yeah, she was very patient. Okay, so um, that's it. That's the whole video. That's how I met my boyfriend, I guess. <laughs> okay, see you again next time. Bye. Oh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and share this video. I don't know. <laughs> okay, bye. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And where should we look? This is weird because I'm using a